My role in the retrial of Louis Rilo was a defense witness, Dr. Daniel Clark, the superintendent of the Toronto Lunatic Asylum. As soon as I was appointed my character, I began researching about Dr. Daniel Clark to gain background knowledge of him. Knowing that the main plea of the defense was to convince the judge that Louis Riel was insane, my role as a doctor was key to decide the outcome. I then began reading the testimonies given by Dr. Daniel Clark and extracted questions that would benefit the defense. In particular, questions that challenged Riel's insanity were chosen to create a case in our favor. In his testimony to Mr. Lemieux, Father Alexis Andre reveals some important facts about Riel that can help justify his actions and help us view him as a hero instead of a traitor. Father Andre details the issues Riel was hoping to resolve with the government. These issues should have been part of a treaty with the Midi people, but Riel's attempt to win the rights for his people were consistently ignored. We all wanted land ownership with river frontage, the abolition of taxes on wood, rights to be educated, and to receive services from the government in French. Father Andre details that Riel's communications were, were repeatedly ignored by the Dominion government and received only one evasive answer. As a Métis, Riel was called a half-breed and knew the rights as a French-speaking Roman Catholic would not be equal to those of the English-speaking settlers arriving from Eastern Canada. As a responsible, articulate, and well-educated man, Riel accepted the difficult role of defending the rights of the Métis and voicing their concerns as a religious, linguistic, and cultural minority. In communicating with the government, Riel was trying to protect the rights of his people through peaceful means. The lack of response prompted Riel and other Métis to form a provisional government in order to protest their cultural, social, and political identity and to negotiate as equals with the Canadian government. The arrival of armed Canadians who hoped to disband the Métis provisional government was so insulting to the Métis that they court-martialed and sentenced Thomas Scott to death. Denounced as a traitor and a murderer, Louis Riel was executed on November 16, 1885. However, his legacy can be seen in many important and enduring aspects of Canadian society. Upon entering Confederation in 1870, the Canadian government guaranteed that 1.4 million acres of land would be given to the Manitoba Métis and that the province would be bilingual. As a protector of minority rights, Riel's insistence on the importance and value of multiculturalism and bilingualism are still reflected in modern Canadian society. Their inclusion in the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms reveals the political and philosophical value of immigration and the role of many different minorities in the creation of Canada. Riel's persistence in fighting for justice, representation under the law, and the rights of his people all clearly earned him the moniker of Europe.